welcome back to my channel. My name is Levi and today we're going to be doing my winter haul of 2019. This is my last haul of the year. Technically I'm filming this in 2020 because I forgot to film everything in 2019. My radiator going on in the background aside. Let's get into it. So the first little stack of books I want to go into I got from Amazon. My brother got me an Amazon gift card for Christmas so I went ahead and I ordered some books that had been on my radar but I didn't necessarily want to pay for myself. So the first book I purchased from Amazon is The Diviners by Libba Bray. This is, as far as I know, a murder mystery set in the 1920s and the kids in this book have some sort of supernatural power. I don't know much other than that. I don't really want to know much other than that. I know that the representation is supposed to be really good. And like, I loved the original cover. The original cover was gorgeous and beautiful, but I don't mind this one. And this is the direction they seem to be taking the rest of the covers. So I really don't mind it. The next one I bought and immediately read, and that is Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Volume 1, High School is Hell. This is written by Jordi Belair, Dan Mora, and Raul Angulo. And it's a reimagining of Buffy. If Buffy were set in modern day, there's differences in the characters, there's differences in the romance. I really enjoyed this book. I gave it a five out of five stars. I like that they're talking more about mental illness in this book and more about everything else that was going on in Buffy. Willow does not start out as season one Willow. Willow starts out in this volume more like season four Willow than anything else. Anya is not the same age of them. Drusilla and Spike are totally different. We get a flash of Angel at the very end. We have a cliffhanger with Xander. We have so much going on within this first volume. I am a huge Buffy fan. I've said it multiple times in, in videos that if a book is pitched as Buffy, cross with X. I'm probably going to buy it. I really like what they did with Cordelia in this book. If you guys don't know, I have a black cat. Her name is Cordelia, named after Cordelia Chase in Bucky the Vampire Slayer because she is just as sassy and pretty as that queen. So I'm really happy with where they took this and what direction they're going in. And I've I'm like really thinking about pre-ordering the second one. I'm really excited for that to drop. I know it drops this year. I just don't know when. The last book I got from Amazon has been on my watch list for a long time. And that is The Call by Peter O'Gillen. Okay, this, I don't know a ton about it. I don't want to know a ton about it. Amazon sent me kind of like a busted book. So if you can see it's curved, I don't mind. I can just put it under a heavy book and it'll be fine. Okay, so those are the last of the books I got from Amazon. Now we're going to go into... The books I got from Book Outlet, I placed two Book Outlet orders. It really was inexpensive for all of these books, but I'm looking at it and I'm like, damn, I really just done bought all these books, didn't I? The first one is The Vegetarian by Han Kang. I don't know if it's Han Kong or Han Kang. This book is speculative fiction. I think it's about a woman who wants to become a vegetarian and I think she gets her family to do it. I know it's horror. I know it sounds a little bit speculative. It's supposed to be weird. It's supposed to be very graphic. I am in for all of those things. The next book I have is Nothing Left to Burn by Heather Azell. And this was a scratch and dent book. So it was like 49 cents because of the sale. And there's nothing wrong with it except for the fact that this part is ripped. And quite honestly, I think that might have even happened in shipping. I don't even know what's wrong with this book other than that. Like there's no writing in it. There's no scribbling. There's nothing wrong with the printing. Cause sometimes when you get scratch and dent books, um, the printing went wrong and the pages, like I have a book where the pages are too long. Um, so obviously this sold as a scratch and dent. But the only thing I can see that's wrong with this book is this little rip, which is something that happened to like another book in shipping. So I'm not mad about it and buy scratch and dent books because usually there's very, very little wrong with them. It's like imperfect produce. Okay, so this is a bit of a thriller. It's about a girl named Aubrey and she has stayed the night at somebody else's house. And in the morning, there's an evacuation notice for her town and the wildfires in California are starting to reach her town. She ends up becoming close to a volunteer firefighter and as more of her dark past shows up, he's not sure if he can trust her and it has something to do with guilt. But this book is set over a 24 hour time period, which is a really short time period to get everything out in the open. So I'm interested to see how the author deals with that. But I also really like this cover and I'm kind of floored that the only thing wrong with this book was that there's like a little tear on the cover. Like that's nothing, that's nothing. 
So this next book is Exit Pursued by a Bear by E.K. Johnston. And our main character is named Hermione, which I think is funny. Um, but the rest of this book isn't very funny. It's a really serious book about a victim of sexual assault. And she's this up and coming woman in her high school. And she's like, well respected. And then this happens. And it kind of throws her through the trash. And it's blurb by Courtney Summers, who's one of my favorite authors, and Tess Sharp, who has written also some hard hitting contemporary novels. So Two authors that I really trust blurb this book. I am sold. I really want to get into it. And it's not, again, not long at all. So I'm sure I'll just fly through it sometime this year. The next book I picked up because of Kayla from Books and Lala. And I think that's the case with another book too. And this is The Dust of a Hundred Dogs by A.S. King. And A.S. King is such a prominent author. This is her debut novel. So this is the first novel she ever read. And Kayla, who is a big fan of A.S. King, has said that this is unlike any of the other novels she's ever written. So if I don't like this novel, I'd be willing to give A.S. King a try again. This is about a girl who was a pirate and she stole something and she hid it. And as a curse, she has to live a hundred years as a dog. And she ends this curse in the 70s. And it's about her time. And it's not, it doesn't take place while she's a dog, it takes place afterwards in her getting reintroduced in society and also trying to find this treasure from like 100 years ago. So it sounds really interesting. I'm pulled in by that. And Kayla did say that there are some chapters where it's like a page or two of her as a dog. So the next book is Middle Game by Shauna Naguire. And this is another work of speculative fiction. It is about two twins, Roger and Dodger, I think. And they're ascending humanhood and becoming gods or they are gods. I really don't know a lot about this, but I really, really liked Every Heart of Doorway. And if she can create that masterpiece within 100 pages, I'm excited what she can do with, how many pages is this? With 500 pages. Now, like I said, I am not a huge reader of big books, but I really, really like Shauna McGuire. And if this can hold my attention for that long, I'd be willing to pick up the rest of her stuff. There's another one of her books, like Into the Drowning Deep or whatever, that has to do with mermaids. And she wrote that under Mira Grant. She's killing the game. Shauna McGuire is really living her best life. The next one is Watch Us Rise by Renee Watson and Aileen Hagen. And this one doesn't even scratch and dent, but it's so busted from shipping. This came out last year and this is about two girls in high school who start like a feminist blog essentially and they start challenging the dress code and challenging misogyny and stuff in their school. And their school actually ends up sending them like a cease and desist letter and it's about them again rising up against that. And I hate this cover. This book is probably really good, but I legitimately hate this cover. The next book I have is The Ancient Magus Bride, The Golden Yarn, and it is an anthology actually. So The Ancient Magus Bride, I feel like started off really small and then it got really popular. I think once the anime started becoming a formulation and all of that. And now there's a couple of different anthologies where different like popular Japanese artists will write small stories for it. And while I'm not 100% caught up on the manga, I've caught up enough to not be spoiled by anything. Obviously, it's edited by Kore Yamazaki, who is the author of The Ancient Magus Bride. Uh, I'm not going to know any of the Japanese names in here. I'm not going to know any of the authors. But I love Elias and Chise so much. So the stories are a Celtic vampire in love with a human uh, to a gemstone knight and even a glimpse into what Silky does in her spare time. I'm really excited to read this and honestly Silky is one of my favorite characters. I really like all the side characters in this world and I want to explore them more so I'm hoping there's a story about Ruth in here too. The next book is Everything Beautiful Is Not Ruined by Danielle Young William and this is about the daughter of an opera singer, an opera singer who's very famous and has done very well for herself and the daughter is kind of aimless. She doesn't know what to do. She doesn't know what she wants to do with her life. She doesn't want her life to be defined by her mother and her mother and her have kind of a broken relationship and so she ends up going to a camp that's specifically kind of made for kids of celebrities and she ends up forming a family there and I wasn't sure whether or not to get this. Um, I was kind of on the edge of getting it and I read to the Goodreads review and everybody loves this book so either I'm going to be in the same road as them or I'm really gonna hate it. It's not that long and it's a contemporary but I heard really good things about the relationship between the mom and her daughter and then the relationship between the wilderness and her daughter and I am excited to get into that. I just like camp stories. I don't know why. The next one is The Safest Lies by Megan Miranda. I have All the Missing Girls by Megan Miranda which I haven't read yet. This is a YA novel. I think the other one is an adult. And this is about a girl whose mom is so secretive. And I think that the mom was kidnapped before she had her daughter and escaped. And so the mom is like so 
secretive and hunched over and she's basically taught her daughter all of these rules of the world and one day the mom goes missing and so the daughter has to backtrack through her mom's life to figure out where the mom is if she's gone forever or what happened to her it's another thriller Megan Miranda I think only does thrillers but she has really good thrillers so I trust her with that the next one I wasn't expecting to be so interested in because I'm not interested in fantasy usually and that is Grace and Fury by Tracy bang heart and I just reread the synopsis because I forgot what it was about and it is about two sisters named Serena and Nomi and Serena has been groomed her whole life to become something called a grace which I think is kind of like either a queen or like kind of I don't know whatever to the heir but the heir ends up taking a liking to her younger sister Nomi instead and Nomi has a really dark secret and Serena takes the fall for it so Serena is punished and Nomi like surrenders to this you know, position as a grace to help her sister while her sister is banished to an island where every day she must fight for her life to survive and Nomi wants to use her position as a grace to save her and that second part I was kind of reading through it I was like yeah this uh seems like pretty run-of-the-mill fantasy and then they're like Serena must fight to her death I'm like what <laughs> so that instantly that instantly captivated me which and it's not long like most fantasy books I think I don't get into fantasy that often because most books are like 800 pages long and I'm like that's too many pages for me to care about so this book is not long and I like that and I'm excited to see where the author takes this. I feel like the next one will shock a lot of you and that's Serious Moonlight by Jen Bennett. I do have another Jen Bennett book on my shelf that I haven't read yet so maybe this wasn't the smartest idea but this is I remember when this was coming out because my friend got an arc of it I wasn't interested at it at the time so Jen Bennett was first going around YouTube for writing Alex approximately which I had zero interest in and then Starry Eyes came out which I had a lot of interest in and now she has Serious Moonlight so this is about a girl named Birdie she's just graduated high school and she is homeschooled and she's kind of secluded so she takes a job working at a historic Seattle museum for the summer between high school and college and at the same time a boy named David is also working there and they end up just becoming friends and she's trying to like grow her social awareness and social circle and she's obsessed with mystery. One day the hotel that she's working for ends up housing a really famous but reclusive author and Daniel and Birdie want to figure out the mystery behind him. So I like the fact that there's a little bit of mystery. I know there's going to be a little bit of romance. I've heard really great things about Jen Bennett. This book is A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Bernard and it's about a girl named Steffi who has selective mutism and a new boy named Reese comes to school and he's deaf and it's not a school for deaf people so he's having a rough time and him and Steffi kind of grow closer and she's got kind of the basic knowledge of sign language and they just start growing closer and figuring themselves out again it looks like another hard-hitting contemporary will I read anything else this year who knows the next one is Little and Lion which won the Stonewall Award because I think it stars a bisexual character it's about a girl who goes to private school and her brother suffers from really bad bipolar disorder and when he has an episode she comes back from school and she's figuring out her sexuality she's figuring out him and trying to help the family it's supposed to be really hard hitting this is by brandy colbert the next book is the summer of broken things by margaret peterson haddix this is about two friends who are kind of not friends anymore and then they're forced to confront themselves when they go on a trip together i loved margaret peterson haddix when i was growing up i read a lot of her books and this was on sale for what like 49 cents so i decided to just pick it up and i really like maybe unpopular opinion I really like this cover I think it's really gorgeous so I'm excited to give her another try and see what she's been up to all the years I haven't been reading her the next one is the hearts we sold by Emily Lloyd Jones and this anything to do with cryptozoology or demonology I'm really into because I don't know I like the fact that there are no rules to that this is about a girl who it's in a futuristic world where you can make a deal with the demon and they will have something happen so she makes a deal with the demon and in return the demon gets her heart. So I'm really interested to read this one. It's honestly been on my TBR for a really long time. The next book is A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kimmermer. Kimmermer? I can't say her last name. And this is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast where the main character has cerebral palsy. I read another book last year about a young girl with cerebral palsy so I'm interested to see how she handles it and how severe the cerebral palsy on the main character will be because there is different severities of it. Everybody I know and their mom has read this book and I want to be on the hype train. Honestly, this one, I don't 
really know what it's about even after reading the synopsis. This is Dealing in Dreams by Lillian Rivera. It stars a Latina main character and she runs a gang and she doesn't want to be in a gang anymore. She's tired of living life on the streets. She wants to move into this like cushy building, but it's very selective. This is like a futuristic world. It's the very selective people who get to live there. And she has to prove herself to the leader of the city that she deserves to be there. And I don't know what the tone of this book is, what the theme of this book is. I don't know if it's supposed to be a mystery, a thriller, a suspense, a coming of age, you know, a contemporary. I don't really know a lot about what the tone is going to be, but the cover is so beautiful and I heard a lot of great things about it. So I'm not afraid to give this a try and I've heard really good things about it from people that I trust. The next book I have is Lily and Duncan by Donna Gephardt. Gephardt? Who knows? This is a middle grade novel. Lily is a trans girl who is dealing with the, I don't want to say repercussions, but the repercussions of coming out in a space that's not quite safe for her yet. And Duncan is a boy who's dealing with bipolar disorder and has a secret in his past. And over one summer, the two come together and form a really strong friendship where all of their secrets are laid out. The fact that there is this in a middle grade novel, again, it makes me really happy that it's being introduced to young kids. So this book is called Losing Leia by Tiffany King, and this is a YA thriller about a girl named Mia who was a twin, um, but her twin tragically disappeared 10 years ago. What Mia doesn't know is that Leia is still alive, and I think the whole idea is that they can like subconsciously feel each other. It looks like just another YA thriller, but the concept was interesting enough to me that I wanted to pick it up. The next one is the conclusion to the I Hunt Killers trilogy. This book <laughs> sounds so corny, but it's actually really good. It's about a boy named Jasper whose father is a serial killer and he's been put in jail. He's been caught and put in jail at the beginning of the first book. And Jasper is struggling with nature versus nurture, like how much of me is my father um, and how much of me is me. And what I thought was really cool is that in the book, Jasper's best friend is a hemophiliac, which is somebody whose blood doesn't clot. So I thought that was just like an interesting twist to put in there in a book that is so filled with blood. And there's a murder in his small town and immediately all fingers point to Jasper, who is the son of a serial killer. And he knows it's not him, so he has to figure out who it is while also struggling with how much of me is my father. There's a good dose of actual like teenager stuff going on while there is also like serious stuff going on and so I'm excited to get to the end of this and my goal for 2020 is to read more series so I want to be able to finish that series this year. The next book is Nice Try Jane Sinner by Leanne Oelke. Oelke? And this is obviously about a girl named Jane Sinner, and she is struggling to afford college. She knows she wants to go to college, but she's struggling to afford it. So she signs up for this reality TV show where you're placed in a dorm. It's kind of like Big Brother, but in college, and things start to go wrong, and there is just putting her life on blast, and it's supposed to be really good. I've heard a lot of great things about it, and I'm not going to lie, the cover drew me in, but it's a book that's been getting a lot of critical appraise from everywhere for years. It's not a book that's fizzled out, and so it's definitely piqued my interest. It's longer than I expected. I don't know why I like the orange so much. The orange is really drawing me in. The next one I have is a courtroom thriller. It is an adult thriller called Miracle Creek by Angie Kim. And this, there's a lot going on in this book. I'm just going to read you the synopsis. In rural Miracle Creek, Virginia, Young and Pack Yu run an experimental medical treatment device called the Miracle Submarine. A pressurized oxygen chamber that patients enter for therapeutic dyes, it's also a repository of hopes and dreams. The dream of a mom that her child can be like other kids. The dream of a young doctor desperate to cure his infertility and save his marriage. The dream of the Yu's themselves, Korean immigrants who have come to the United States so their teenage daughter can have a better life. When the oxygen chamber mysteriously explodes, killing two people, all of these dreams shatter with it, and the ensuing murder trial uncovers unimaginable secrets and lies. In Miracle Creek, Angie Kim takes a classic form, courtroom drama, and draws on her own experience as an immigrant, a lawyer, and the mother of a real-life submarine patient to turn it into something wholly original, unpedownable, real. This is a spellbinding novel by an exciting new voice. I just, there's so much going on. I feel like the best way to present that would be with the synopsis. The next book from Book Outlet is The Kingdom by Jess Rothenberg. This is young adult Westworld is what it was pitched as. 
and it's another fantasy. I believe this is set at a theme park that's supposed to be kind of like Disneyland, and there is animatronics who are essentially AIs at this point, and they're not supposed to feel emotion. One of the AIs starts feeling emotion, like she's not programmed to feel emotion, but she starts to like feel it, and I think she's on the run from people who want to shut her down because of that. And the last book I have from Book Outlet is Strange Grace by Tessa Gratton, and this looks like it's gonna enter new adult territory. It's set in a town where everything is perfect. Uh, the crops are all thriving, the people are all, you know, wealthy, everybody's healthy, there's so much good going on, but it's because once a year they sacrifice one teenage girl and one teenage boy to, like, the pagan god or whatever god they have, and that sacrifice is for the whole year. But then one of the sacrifices escapes, and so I think the town has to find another one while also tracking down this one, and it looks like it's gonna get pretty dark. That is it from the books from Book Outlet. If you are still here, we're going to go into the books I got from the bookstore that's closing down. I got a couple of books from there. And then I just have the books from Barnes & Noble. And finally, this video will be over and you can go back to living the rest of your life. So we're going to start on the books that I got from the bookstore that was closing. The first book I have is a middle grade. It is uh, The Hunt for the Seventh by Christine Morton Shaw. And this is a middle grade thriller about a guy who moves into a new house that's super haunted. And the children who were murdered there, I'm assuming, keep urging him to find the seventh. And he's like, I don't know what that means. And so they point him to a prophecy that he ends up being tied up in. Looks really interesting. I don't know what it is about middle grade thrillers, but they're usually pretty good. So the next one I have is Trafficked, which was in the middle grade section. Should not have been there. And this is by Sophie Hayes. This is a true story of a British girl who was kidnapped and sold into sexual slavery and her way out of it. I don't know why this was in the middle grade section. Kids should not be reading that. The next one I have is Clothes for the Season by Mary Downing Hahn, who I have a whole collection from. This was my favorite thriller author when I was a kid. She was like on par with R.L. Stein. I read all of her books except for this one. So it was there. It was less than a dollar. I picked it up. Uh, it's probably going to be subpar because I'm older now but I can still appreciate it and I will read it. All right, the next two books are the second and third book in a series that I've been wanting to read for a long time and that is Fairy Winter and Fairy After by Janie Lee Simner. This is set in a post-apocalyptic world where essentially I think fairies caused the apocalypse and our main character has to go into the fae world to save somebody and Naya from Naya Reads and Smiles really likes this series and she doesn't read a lot of thriller and I was interested when she was talking about it and I had no idea it was post-apocalyptic which is a genre that I personally really like and it just seems like a really great blend of urban fantasy, fantasy, and post-apocalyptism. That's not a word, post-apocalyptic, but these are both a dollar so I figured out, I figured like why not just get them while I can. The next book is Red Rising by Pierce Brown. This is an adult fantasy that I honestly don't know much about other than I think it's like Taken but with your wife and also a fantasy book and so many people I know rant and rave about it. The next one is The Unlikelies by Carrie Firestone. This is about a girl whose like good deed goes viral. I think she saved somebody by accident or something and somebody else has recorded it and it's now gone viral and she ends up in like a support group for other people this has happened to and they end up forming a vigilante group and vigilanteism is usually just like frowned upon and they start saving people and doing like small good deeds throughout their town and the repercussions start coming back to them and it like the tagline of the book uh, is, is it true that no good deed goes unpunished? Okay, the next two books I think are really funny because I had no idea they were kind of the same premise um, until I got home. So the first one, I mean, these are the last two books from the bookstore that was closing. This one's clearly from Barnes & Noble um, before that, but this is The French Girl by Lexi Elliott, and then this is The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley, and these actually both have to do with Oxford graduates. So The French Girl is about a group of, I think, six girls that are graduating from Oxford or like on spring break from Oxford, and 
wanting to let loose. So they go to the French countryside and they're in like a little villa. They're having fun. They're having a good time. And then they meet the girl next door whose name is like Sovereign or something. They don't really get along with her, but she's just the French girl next door. And one day, a couple of the girls and Sovereign have a huge falling out and Sovereign is never seen again. And the case is just, you know, gone cold and she's presumed dead. She's missing, presumed dead. And then 10 years later, new evidence is judged up and they reopen the case to Sovereign's disappearance. And now the girls have to figure out what really happened that night and to see who actually did something or if she really did just disappear. So that's interesting. But the next book is The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. And this is about a group of male Oxford graduates who are meeting up for a reunion in this random cabin in the middle of the woods because everybody knows it's a great idea. They get snowed in and somebody in the cabin gets murdered. And they all know that it had to be one of them because there's nobody else. So they're trying to figure out who the killer is while the killer's, I'm assuming, also trying to save his own ass. So it's kind of a who can you trust deal. But these concepts are just really similar. And I think that's funny. They're both really interesting to me. And I will read both of them. But the fact that these are just two very similar books, um, dealing with two very different demographics, I think is funny. And I didn't realize that till I got home. So all right, the final round of books are from Barnes & Noble. I got a Barnes & Noble gift card for Christmas, so I went ahead and I bought some books. One of the first books I bought was Michigan vs. the Boys by Carrie S. Allen, and this is about a girl named Michigan who's on the hockey team, and the girls' hockey team gets dissolved. The funding kind of dries up, and there's nowhere for these girls to go, so the hockey team gets dissolved, and all of the other girls are fine with it. They go to other sports, or they just stop doing hockey altogether, but Michigan really wants to play sports, and so she joins the boys team and the boys are not very kind to her and neither is the coach and I've heard that this book does get very dark and very deep into what it's like to have that kind of treatment aimed towards you. I'm very excited to read it. It looks so good and a lot of people were comparing this to Beartown but Michigan versus the boys immediately drew my attention and then somebody I really trust reviewed it really well and I was like well might as well so I wanted to pick that up the next book I actually bought earlier but I never hauled it and that is The Whisper Man by Alex North I have been halfway through this book for over a month I don't know why I'm actually enjoying it but it's so slow it's really slow I'm enjoying it but it's just taking me a while to get into I am 187 pages in and the real exciting thing only happened like 15 pages ago so it's really slow trying to get into it but at the same time very much enjoying it the next book is the starless sea by aaron morgan stern and i am a big fan of the night circus one of my best friends also a big fan of the night circus and this has nothing to do with the night circus i actually don't know what this book really is about i know that it's about a boy and he finds this book that starts him on a quest and I'm assuming he's on the quest for a key. I know that there is a gay relationship in here. I know that there's a lesbian relationship in here. One of my best friends read it and really really enjoyed it. The next book I picked up is The Chain because Barnes & Noble was having a huge like after Christmas sale and a lot of things were 50% off so I picked up some things. The first one is The Chain by Adrian McKinty and this is about a woman who drops her daughter off at school and it's a normal day and then like an hour later she gets a call and she's like uh hello and the person on the other line is like i've kidnapped your daughter if you want to see her alive again you have to kidnap another kid and i will give your daughter back and you have to be part of the chain so she figures out that this is the thing that's been going on for a really long time it's literally a chain of people who keep kidnapping other people's kids to get their own kid back and the mom in the story i think is debating whether to kidnap another kid or to break the chain it sounds really interesting it's beginning a lot of hype the last two books are winterwood by shay earnshaw i initially thought this was going to be a sequel to the wicked deep it's not it's totally different so winterwood um is about a girl and i think her friend has gone missing or there's something creepy about the woods and there's a boy who's gone missing and she goes into the woods and ends up getting snowed in at a cabin with the boy who was missing and she learns a lot about him it's a lot better than i'm making it sound i'm just not 100 percent sure about what it's about but it's the vague synopsis intrigued me so i am intrigued and the very last book i bought is slay by Brittany Morris. This is a book I had the opportunity to read as an arc and like a fool passed it up. This is about a girl named Kira Johnson who's 17 and she's like this computer genius and she's created this game where people can go on and it's Nubian inspired and there's hundreds of thousands of black gamers playing this game and she's already getting a lot of hate for it being like a majority black 
community. And then one day a man is murdered for something that happened in the game and it's now being like sued for being like anti-white and spreading racial hate and da da da. And she was like, uh, what? And nobody actually knows that she's the one behind this game. And somebody figures it out and starts blackmailing her. And she's also like really nervous about what's going on with the real world repercussions of this. Um, which she thinks is not deserved. So I'm hoping to get to this in February. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. If you want to see more from me, click that subscribe button. And if you bought any books yourself or you're excited about any of these, go ahead and tell me in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you soon in another video. Bye.